Hello viewer, welcome to Science Hub. This is Masha Abila from Loreto Convent Valley Road in Form 3. And I'm Olivia Carey. Today, we are going to learn about empirical formula. First, by doing an experiment that will determine the empirical formula. Today, we will be determining the empirical and molecular formula of magnesium oxide. Now, we will have simple apparatus that will help us do this experiment. First of all, we need a crucible. We need a pair of tongs, a spatula, um, a tripod stand, a pipe and clay triangle, a banner, and a pair of matchbooks. Not forgetting the magnesium medium. So first of all, we will accurately weigh an empty crucible with its lid. The weight of the crucible and its lead is 19.52 grams. Then we shall record the data in a table. I will draw the table on the phone. As she's doing that, we will also record the mass of a magnesium ribbon in the crucible and in the lid. The reading is 20.36 grams. That is the mass of the crucible, the lid, and the magnesium ribbon. From there, we can get the mass of the ribbon used. That will be the mass of the magnesium ribbon, the crucible, and the lead subtracted from the mass of the empty crucible and the lead. That is the mass of the magnesium ribbon used. That is, um, Zero point eight grams. Eight four grams. From there on, we will place the, mag the magnesium ribbon in the crucible and wait. We have already done that. Then we will heat the crucible gently, strongly until the metal starts to burn. Now, as we heat the crucible, we lift the lid with a pair of tongs to allow the metal to burn. As she does this, she, before we start the experiment, although our magnesium was clean, we usually clean magnesium ribbon so that we remove any oxide feeling from the magnesium. Also, she's occasionally lifting the lid so that she allows air, controlled amounts of air, to enter the crucible. Also, we heat all the contents inside the crucible so that all the magnesium reacts. In the meantime, she will continue filling up the table. We will expect ma a white powder to be formed, that is magnesium oxide. Therefore, we will get the mass of magnesium oxide plus the crucible and the heat after heating.
can also get the mass of oxygen. Once you've gotten the mass of the magnesium oxide. A white powder is being formed in the crucible. Marsha, can you observe the white powder? It's, it's a white powder. How that being formed? Now we may close the panel and allow the crucible to cool so that we may get the mass of the magnesium oxide which has been formed inside the crucible, the crucible and the lid after heating. So, the mass of the magnesium oxide I'm going to get the measurements. The mass is 20.92 grams. From there, we can obtain the mass of the magnesium oxide by subtracting the mass of the magnesium oxide plus the crucible and the lead after heating from the mass of the empty crucible and the lead. which is 1.4 grams. The mass of the oxygen can also be obtained by subtracting the mass of the magnesium from the mass of the magnesium oxide. which is 0 0.56 grams. In the following experiment, there could be sources of error. This can be found when the amount of air that was being allowed inside the crucible was not controlled, causing the magnesium to react with nitrogen and other possible gases. When it reacts with other gases in the air, it makes a false reading of the oxygen use. So, when you are calculating the empirical formula, which I'm just about to do, you might get the wrong readings. So I shall calculate the empirical formula and of what we have so. So the first element is magnesium and the second element is oxygen. So the mass of magnesium as per the table we have here is 0 0.84 grams. And that of oxygen is 0 0.96. Their relative molecular masses can be obtained from the periodic table. Whereby that one of magnesium will be 24 and that one for oxygen will be 16. From the previous video, 
they told us that we could calculate the number of moles by dividing the mass of an element by its relative molecular mass. So we shall divide 0 0.84 by 24. You see, we can see the same thing is done for oxygen. The mole ratio is obtained by dividing the number of moles by the smallest number we want when we calculate the moles. So, we shall divide 0 0.03 and 0 0.03 divide by 0 0.035. In our case, the numbers are the same, so we just divide by 0 0.035. Okay, so this is is 1. So the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. From this, we divide the empirical formula of magnesium oxide which is Mg1 is only 1 and O to oxygen is also 1. And now we shall have a series of questions just to demonstrate how empirical formula is gotten. So, the next question is an oxide of a silicon was found to contain 47% of silicon. What is the empirical formula of the oxide? We have been given the relative molecular mass of silicon to be 28 and that of oxygen to be 16. The elements are silicon and oxygen. The percentage of silicon is 47%. Therefore, the percentage of, of oxygen is 53%. This is obtained by subtracting 100% minus 47% to give you 53. The relative molecular mass of silicon is 28, whereas that of oxygen is 16. Moles are contributed by dividing the mass of the relative molecular mass. Um, 47 divided by 28. That is 1.68. That is 3.31. So in this case, we see that the moles we have 1.68 and 3.31. We take the smaller mole to divide the bigger one. So divide by 1.68 and 68. One is to two. Therefore, the formula is this I O Q. From there on, we will move to a second question. The question is, when 94.5 grams of hydrated barium hydroxide was heated to a constant mass of, with a constant temperature, 51.3 grams of anhydrous barium hydroxide was obtained. Determine the empir empirical formula of the hydrated barium hydroxide. The formula of this is BA, which stands for barium, into brackets, OH, which is the hydroxide, close the bracket, and you put a 2 as a subscript. A point. And we do not know the mass of the water or the number of molecules of the water, H2O. The relative molecular mass of barium is 137. That of oxygen is 116. 
Variam is one hundred and twenty seven. Oxygen is sixteen. And hydrogen is one. So again, we write some of Before we get the empirical formula of barium hydroxide, the hydrated barium hydroxide, we must first get the value of N in order to get the empirical formula. So the mass is 51. The RMN is 171. Then the mass of water is 43.2. This is derived by subtracting 51.3 grams from the original mass of the hydrated barium hydroxide, which is 94.5 grams. The relative molecular mass of water is 18. Moles are calculated by dividing the mass over the relative molecular mass. So 51.3 divided by 1.71. That is 0 0.3. And those of water, 2.4. Once again, if you divide with a smaller number, which is 0 0.3, and then 2.4 times 2.4 times 2.4 times 8. So the formula is going to be BA into brackets OH2 dot the value of N is 8 H2 so she shall continue with the molecular formula. As we have understood the molecular formula, using the molecular formula, we can therefore de using the empirical formula, sorry, we can therefore derive the molecular formula. Now the molecular formula gives us the exact number of atoms in a compound. Now this is the formula formula used when obtaining molecular formula. is the empirical formula. And N and N, which is the relative formula mass. Now we will do a series of questions where we will obtain the molecular formula given either the empirical formula or the molar and the molar mass or the relative molecular mass. So now the question. 
In a synthesis reaction, it was found that 60 grams of an element Q, not real symbol, reacted with 24 grams of oxygen. Find the molecular formula of the oxide if it's relative. In a synthesis reaction, it was found that 60 grams of element Q, which is not its real symbol, reacted with 24 grams of oxygen. 24 grams of oxygen. Find the molecular formula of the oxide if its relative molecular mass is 336. First of all, we will write the summary. This is elements. The mass relative R R and M moles mole ratio now the elements are Q and oxygen. The mass, 60 grams for Q, 24 grams for oxygen. The RMM for Q is 120, and for oxygen is 16. Now to obtain the number of moles, we divide the mass by the RMM. Zero point five and oxygen one point five. We can get the mole ratio by dividing this by the smallest number, and here this is zero point five. So the mole ratio will be one is to three. One is to three. Therefore, the empirical formula of this element of this compound is. Is um, Q or Q? Yes. Therefore, we've been asked for the molecular formula. We will have this formula MF, which stands for the molecular formula, is equal to EF into So, we already have them. We've been given the molecular formula of. The molecular, of, the, the formula of we've been given the relative molecular mass of Q, yes. Of the compound, of the compound, that's 336. 336. Then we calculate the equivalent formula mass, which will be 168. Q or Q. So first we take Q or three. Q the element of Q is one hundred and twenty. Then you add that of oxygen, which is sixteen, but there are three atoms, so it is sixteen times three. Into brackets. Then the answer you get is 120 plus 8, which is 168. This is the empirical formula mass. Then we divide it by the R and M, which was 336. So it's 166. Um, you will divide the R and M by the empirical formula mass. Therefore, we'll do Divide 336 divided by 168. 
is two of two. So now from n, the value of n is the same. So the value of n is two. Therefore, we will multiply the empirical formula by the value of n. The empirical formula is Q of V of V of V and we multiply all this by 2. Now the Q times 2 will give you 2 and O times 2, 3 times 2 will give you 6. Therefore the molecular formula of this compound is Q2 or 6. We have come to the wrap of our program today. We hope that we have educated all you people. Thank you. Have a nice day.